Another day, another remake, and finally, another video on my channel. Yeah, sorry about that, but instead of groveling for forgiveness, I think it would be better to just talk about what we're all here to look into. Resident Evil 3 Remake. So having made an analysis video on Leon, I would consider myself a fan of this series now. And if there was one game that I was truly interested in playing in this franchise, it would have to be the third installment. And yeah, I streamed through the entire thing and I absolutely loved it. And because of this, hype was pumping through my veins as the remake was just about to come out. Now, I didn't get to review the excellent recreation of the second in the series that came out a year back, so I made the decision that I was definitely going to make a video on this one, praising it as much as I could, and sadly, I can't really do that, because... If there is one word to describe my feelings for this experience, it would have to be disappointment. Anyways, let's head right into it. Keep in mind, I will focus on this as if it's purely a standalone game, while only bringing up the original whenever I feel it would be beneficial for this review. I mean, calling this a remake certainly means that it has to be compared a little bit, right? Alright. Narratively, this game takes place both the day before our police boy arrives at Raccoon City, as well as the day after. Jill Valentine, the secondary protagonist of RE1, is chilling in her apartment doing some investigation on Umbrella, while also preparing herself in leaving the city in a couple of days. However, before she can enjoy some of her pizza, some spoilery stuff happens immediately, meaning that she has to finally escape the RC, seeing the entire area filled with panic, chaos, and of course, Zombies. And that's the story in a nutshell, pretty much. It is pretty simple, but it doesn't need to be anything else. If anything, it could have been negative if there were too much here with the premise of an outbreak. Of course, it does go a bit deeper when meeting the UBCS, Mikhail, Nikolai, Tyrell, and the best boy Carlos, but the main mission is the final escape. What is different from the original here is that it does take Jill's last adventure into consideration, showing that it has heavily affected her, which I consider to be a big plus. It doesn't go too far with it, sadly, but what is here is welcomed. I will also praise the chemistry between the two primary characters, Valentine and Carlos. The progression between these two is so much better than what the PS1 game had, and that is mainly the writing's strength. The pacing is also extremely fast, so it never gets boring or exhausting. However, there is one massive negative here in the story department that I have to mention, and it comes from the quick-moving narrative. This game can feel like it is rushing to the end. There are a lot of cut areas, one being my favorite location of the original, the clock tower, and instead of moving to these places yourself, there's a lot of hard cuts and cutscenes to move the story for you. Imagine that the game itself is a theme park on a conveyor belt. Instead of moving around yourself, the game goes into autopilot here and there. Uh, this I consider a negative. Another thing worth mentioning is that since they cut a lot of areas, they created a completely new location for the final act. Sadly, it is too similar to RE2 Remix's last venue. And finally, on a personal note, Resident Evil 3 had a lot of, I would say, iconic moments in the franchise, yet here they all are stripped away. They also had an awesome mechanic in the original where you could choose your own adventure style, having two decisions, either fight the monster, run into the police station, jump out of the moving train, or use the emergency brakes, and again, that's gone. In a quick summary, this has a simple yet fast-paced story that never gets boring with fantastic writing for the characters, but it feels far more on rails than the exploratory nature of the last game, and at worst feels rushed in some of the later hours. But for as much as we can love the drama of Resident Evil, it is the gameplay that will always be the key for all of these games. So. How are the mechanics? Best way to describe it is to say that the controls are the ones from the sequel's remakes only improved upon. You have more movement options, going so far to have a designated dodge button, already alleviating one of my biggest gripes with the last game. Heck, if you dodge pixel perfect, you get a slow-mo mode where you can do some insane damage against your enemies. I originally thought that this would be overpowered, but from my playthrough, I wouldn't say that it is. Unless we are talking about... Oh! Oh! Ha <laughs> ha! 
Yeah, I can't really talk about this game without going into one of the main selling points, can I? Nemesis is back! And this time he's brimmed with tons of ways to mess you up. He runs, he punch, he spider-mans, he's an amazing pursuer whenever he's on screen. For the first third of the game. Okay, I'm just gonna go right into it. I am really disappointed in how underutilized this tyrant is, which is so weird. The original game has him in its subtitle. <laughs> Without spoiling anything, he is not like Mr. X in the sense that he will constantly hunt you down as you are roaming in the city, but more used in a scripted slash specific way when the developers want you to be fleeing from him. And he is so limited in where he can follow you, so many areas where he simply jumps away. And that is so confusing to me, considering just how much the devs gave him mechanic-wise. You never really get to enjoy him as a threat. Hell, in the original PlayStation 1 game, he wields a bazooka for over an hour, while here, it's probably less than five minutes? Sure, they have a new thing where he uses a flamethrower, but just like everything else in this game, it feels so quick time eventy. <laughs> everything feels so on rail. Oh shit, Nemesis has a Flammenwerfer? Oh, just run through a linear building with tons of cutscenes. Holy God, is that a bazooka? Just run through an alley. Oh no, he has finally grabbed hold of Jill. Just push the analog button up. Here's the thing, this is a remake, so the developers can do whatever they want when reimagining the game. It's just, I don't think they made the right creative decisions here. Not only is this beautiful son of a gun underused, he also turns into something that is clearly not Nemesis later on. In the original, he stays almost unchanged until the very final confrontation, but here... <sighs> Sorry for talking so much about one character, but to be completely honest, the bioweapon was one of the main reasons for my interest in the original in the first place. But aside from him, what else is there to talk about? I think it's important to know that this is way more linear than RE2 Remake, having you only explore very, very few areas. It is also extremely action-focused. I would call this more of an action game than a horror one. It is also, and I'm certain that you might have heard this before, pretty short. I myself looked through every nook and cranny for you know, secrets and stuff to find, but, you know, as briefly mentioned, it felt a bit rushed at the end. There is also a severe lack of puzzles here. Not going to lie in saying that RE3 had the best brain teasers, but I feel like they could have helped here in making you explore the city more, which I feel is lacking. There is also no extra content like mercenary mode. Yes, the resistance multiplayer thing is here instead of that horde battle thing, but single player wise, it only holds the main story. Overall, linear, fluid, action-based gameplay, which improves on the previous game's mechanics, only to falter on almost everything else. Also an abundance of quick time events, I'm kind of surprised. Negativity has been a bit too much in the spotlight, which is a shame because this is a good game. So, let's look at some of the positives through its presentation. This game is absolutely gorgeous to look at, and my PC can't even handle much of it. What you are currently seeing does not do it justice at all. Not only does it visually look great, the music is also fantastic. The soundtrack is an updated mixing of the classic tracks, and I adore it. All the characters, enemies, and the city have all gotten positive redesigns. Carlos, Mikhail, and Nemesis, before his transformation, specifically look perfect, in my humble opinion. Something also worth mentioning is that the writing that you can find on notes, books, etc. are all fantastic. Fantastic reads. I feel like I've been a bit too harsh on the game, but the reason for this is simply that the old classic ended up being something that I truly adored. So having the remake be so different, being different is not necessarily a bad thing, but the differences themselves are not that well implemented. It feels as if the devs played through the classic and then wrote a list of everything that they needed to make. Meeting the UBCS, going to the electric plant, the nemesis with a bazooka, train section, the hospital, etc, etc, but as they implemented those, they didn't put the stuff in between these moments in the adventure. When it all comes down to it, while I wouldn't consider this a good remake, it is a good game. The gameplay is a lot of fun, and that will always be the most important part. But after having played through Jill's second journey, it makes things really... Well, difficult. <laughs> I hope there was something of worth there for you, because there definitely was something here for me. But that I will talk about later. But until then, I'm King Grim, or the guy who needs to pull myself together, whatever you prefer, and I'll see you guys next time!